All right, here we are. What a group we have here. Welcome to the Malta Community Council panel. Um, we're just uh, waiting for, for one more speaker to be here, Norman. But I'd say uh, let's get started regardless. Um, this, this panel is basically uh, capable of answering all the questions you have about Mautic. It can be anything product related, community related, doesn't really matter. So feel free to ask your questions at the link below. Uh, this is better. So if you have any questions, post them below. It can be about anything. Um, let's get started with a brief introduction of everyone. So um, let's get started with Eki. Hmm, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, maybe we should uh, mention for people what a community council is in the first place. Um, if you followed Mautic in the, in the past months and years, we've been struggling and working hard to find the, the next generation shape for our own community with the teams and all the structures involved. The community council is something where the team leads work together with just a handful of, of other people, but mostly I would say from Acquia, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, and uh, on a really high level, uh, discuss the, the fate of the community and the project as, as a whole. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm here because I am leading the community team. The community team is, for, for instance, in organizing events like a Mordecon, but it's also in general responsible for building the, the community, growing, uh, putting the right accents, etc. I'm located in Germany, in Hanover, Northern Germany, and with an agency that does Mordic for a living. Sounds fantastic. Thank you, Aki. Let's uh, go over to Ruth. There she is. Hello, everybody. Um, great to be here with you today. So my name is Ruth Cheeston. I'm based in the UK in Ipswich, which is in the east of England. Uh, I've been a contributor to the Mautic project pretty much since it first started. And I started working for Acquia as the Mautic community manager just over a year ago. And then in August, I became the project lead. So yeah, I'm really excited to have this panel and to hear the questions people have and hopefully we'll be able to answer them. All right, great to have you here. On to Dries. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dries. Um, I guess there's two parts to my story. Uh, very quickly, I started the Drupal project, open source content management system. Uh, I'm still the project lead for Drupal today. I've been doing Drupal for 20 years. And then I co-founded Acquia and I'm the chief technology officer at Acquia responsible for the product and the product marketing organization. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm here. Nice to, uh, nice to be here. All right, thank you, Therese. Hello, Leon. Hello there. Yeah, my name is Leon. Um, I'm the leader of the education team so I'm responsible for the documentation, a bit of the forum management, and the new founded knowledge base. Um, I'm 22, and I'm also based in Germany, in Hanover, and I'm working in the same agency as Eki. And yeah, I've been doing Mordic for around three, two and a half to three years now, and um, I've been the leader of team education for over half a year now. Yeah. Great to have you here, Thank thanks. You. And then last but not least, Radu. Hi, uh, I'm Radu. I'm uh, from Bucharest, Romania. And um, I have been started with Motic uh, kind of five years ago <clears throat> in the corporate world, actually, on an interaction with IBM. And um, now I own a small digital agency, and which is actually <clears throat> living on uh, Motic. So basically, that's what we do. Uh, I'm also the marketing uh, team lead for the Motic community, and uh, happy to have you, all you here, all you all of you here. All right, thank you so much. Um, let's get started. I'm actually I'm looking at the questions currently, but I gotta say that I'm not seeing any questions yet. <laughs> so. Um, I would like I would like to start by asking Dries um, about how has your experience been with the with Maltic 
so far and with the, with the community council, with the leadership team, uh, you've been involved for, for a while now. Mm -hmm. And so how's your experience been so far? Yeah, I've been involved for, well, I've been involved with Modic actually from, you know, the early, early days. <laughs> Funny enough, I was, uh, I don't know if most, I don't know if people know, but it was an early stage investor. <laughs> actually, when Modic was founded by DB. Um, and so I've been advising DB on the site, so to speak. But um, I've been more involved through the council ever since we started the council. Um, and that experience has been great, to be honest. I, I feel like I've been able to provide sort of lessons learned from the Drupal project. And, um, you know, I've been helping with, you know, how to shape the different working groups, how to evolve the governance model, how to evolve how we do releases. Um, so I've been able to act as an advisor, I guess, to the Modic Council. I didn't do any of the implementation. I'm not definitely not taking credit for any of the hard work, but I think I've been able to share my sort of experience from Drupal. And I've been very happy. Like I feel like the team and the Modic community have been very receptive um, to that advice and have taken the bits that they like and uh, added their own, you know, flavor to it, if you will. And they've come up with something that I think will set up the Modic community for success in, in the long run. So I'm pretty excited actually about how quickly we're seeing some some changes in governance and how we work and these kinds of things. So sorry. Uh, I'd like to um, to ask Ruth Ruth about this in a bit more detail because you've been involved in this in, in far more detail. I mean, for Dries, it must be great to see things uh, moving from a high level, but you're you're really like deep down into all the changes that have been happening recently. How have you been experiencing those? Yeah, it has been very uh, full on for the last year and a half or so, really. Um, I think it's been great to have the team from the community council be involved and you know, setting up the structures that we have in the community now. And we're very much bringing in what we know from other communities. So some of the team leads are active in the Typo3 community. I've previously come from the Joomla community. Dries has come obviously with a lot of background in Drupal, but also a lot of awareness across other open source projects. And basically what we're trying to do is avoid reinventing the wheel. So if there are structures in other projects that we think will work well in Mautic, then why not try and take those and bring them in? But also there are things that we're coming up with that are completely new, that are things that people in the team have said, oh, I think this might work well. And we've been able to slot that in as well. So, you know, coming up with ideas into action is another. And I think the most important thing I've learned from this process is like doing everything transparently. So doing it publicly and saying, these are the things we're looking at doing. This is how we're planning on doing it. You can get involved. This is how to get involved. Having meetings that happen on Slack so anyone can see what's happening and being discussed and then put over to the forums has meant people have a bit more of an idea of what happens in the community. And we've been able to pull people into the community as well. You know, they might be commenting on something and that's a really nice way for us to say, well, why don't you join the next team meeting? and come and ask that question yourself. Or why don't you suggest how we could implement that in this community? Um, so that's been great, really, to see new contributors coming in, but also to see the synergies between all of the different open source projects. Makes a lot of, th of sense. Thanks for sharing that, uh, that experience. I see that in the meantime, we have the first question that came in which is how much preparation time did Multicon take approximately? Now, I know Ruth, Ruth has been do doing a lot, uh, but Eki has been uh, very involved as well. So I'd like to switch to, to Eki to ask about your experience with, uh, with Multicon. Oh, you're muted. I was so proud to mute, mute myself. <laughs> um, yeah, actually Ruth has been like feels like 90 percent of uh doing the work for Mordicon. i i was underwater a lot myself that's because i 
for some reason submitted uh, a handful of talks rather than just one and uh, most of them got accepted um, so I had good preparation for the talks to do but the Morticon itself um, for me I said from the beginning I'm the community team lead and we, the, we have a working group uh, in our team for Morticon but I cannot lead this thing so we tried hard to find new people for the team who take over the work. Um, and in the end, most of it ended up on, on Ruth's shoulders and she has been pulling off miracles these days. So I cannot speak for her. It's not only days, it's also literally nights that, that she had to work. And um, you cannot imagine what a variety of, of tasks there are if you want to invent such a thing from scratch including doing it all online etc most of uh, most of us haven't not even done that before but even been at a conference like this with open eyes um and, and i'm very very happy that it went so well so far look on wood um yeah but it was crazy work and then um i'm looking forward to next year because it's going to be much much easier and we should discuss the format for the next year maybe but uh, I, I'd rather hand over to Ruth and let her, her do an estimation of work. Let's uh, let's do that then. Um, oh wait, have you been actually been able to sleep in the last few weeks or? So sleep is one thing I do not compromise on <laughs> because if I haven't slept, you don't want to be anywhere near me. I, I get very short tempered. Um, it has been an awful lot of work. Um, it, it's been a lot of work in terms of trying to find the right platform and then trying to find how to actually make these streams work, for example. So we have six different StreamYard accounts, which the team are loving. <laughs> or having to make sure you're logged into the right account to run your sessions. Um, and six separate tracks, obviously, running at the same time. Um, yeah, we've learned a lot from it, actually. Um, and time-wise, I think... Yeah, ultimately, we, we try to work as a team, but the rest of the team are volunteers, right? And I'm paid. So ultimately, if there isn't a volunteer able to help with something, then it comes back to me. And that's fine. Um, I would say probably the last week has been the most intense. So my entire focus over the last seven days has been this event. Um, prior to that, it was a lot more uh, planned over time. So we started talking about this probably back in July April and May, we realized it wasn't going to happen in person because of COVID. And July, August is when we made the decision we have to go virtual. So it's actually come together quite quickly, um, comparatively, I think. So um, to add a bit onto that, there's another question which came in from Nick is asking, um, do you think not having physical meetups slows down community building or is it um, status quo or even better? And hi, Dries. Hey. So, um... <laughs> I guess that's Nick Vanoff from Drop Solid. <laughs> this is going to be my guess. Well, yeah. <laughs> hi, Nick. So cool. um, I'm going to try and switch to uh, multiple speaker view because there's so many views. Perfect. So, is there anyone who wants to uh, to answer this this question? So, how is the how is this event compared to a physical meetup? Oh, can I go first, please? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> because I, I have really strong opinions about this one. <laughs> um, um, w the second question you just asked is not exactly the same as you asked before. So, this event, as compared uh, compared to a, a physical uh, version of it um is is a big deal in general community building without physical meetups is is another story um let me start by by generally saying the modi community is not so large that we can easily do physical meetups everywhere frequently so it is a really good thing for us that we have the chance to go online. And this, this the fact that we got forced to do this Mordicon online was a really groundbreaking thing. And then they, a, 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 it started off with a sprint that we did, the first virtual sprint that we did. Everybody, everybody said, oh, well, we'll, we'll, online sprint, 
not so good. But then people attended that would never in the world have attended otherwise. Uh, basically, we are in the community council. We're still a, a Western-centric group, and we're all used to travel from the U.S. to Europe and vice versa, and then uh, across Europe. But other people in in Asia, in Middle East, in, in South America, and in Africa, do not have that luxury. They they cannot necessarily afford the travel. The travel. They have huge visa issues, etc. So for the first time, people were able to join in and to, to get visible and get active. And that was a huge step forward for the Mordic community. And the fact that that, that Mordic is a worldwide phenomenon, a phenomenon is, is, is one good thing. But the fact that we are now leveraging that for the community is a completely different thing. So in other words, I never want to go back from, from doing these things virtual. But at the same time, I, I do think we need some physical components, whatever that is. So up for the next one. Yeah, I would agree with that, if, if I may chime in. I think there's pros and cons to both, really. And the big advantage of a virtual event, as Eke said, is it's, it's more inclusive and it helps you build a more diverse community because it's such, you know, it's a lot more accessible, obviously. And, and that's a very big deal, right? That's very important. Uh, at the same time, I do miss the physical events. Um, I think there's those provide an opportunity to build real, more meaningful relationships. Often there's something special about going for a drink after the conference or, you know, spending time in person with each other. I think that's, it lends itself well to creating real camaraderie, if you will, between individuals and I personally was looking forward to meet a lot of the Modic community in person. And I'm a little bit sad that that didn't happen this year. At the same time, as I mentioned, um, there is real important advantages to, to virtual events uh, as well. So for me, it would be great if we could do a little bit of both, you know, in the future. Like we could keep a, a virtual component as well as find ways to meet each other in person. So. Yeah, absolutely. And we're also seeing some uh, some events from local initiatives, for example, in, in Japan and in, in Africa and in several countries. So, yeah, there, there might be a balance at some point where you have a global digital event and maybe even a physical one. And then you always have the, the local initiatives and local groups of people to meet up about Maltic. So that's um, that's a great balance, I'd say. So there there's an... Sorry, is, any, is there anyone who wants to chime in on this one? Yeah, rather go. Yeah, absolutely. I think the future will be a mix of both, a hybrid if you want. You have a group of people that will do it physical, the ones that are able and available in terms of time and traveling and so on. And then you have the rest, which <clears throat> due to various reasons are going to be online and, and mix of that. I did some of those in the past and... Uh, for various reasons, they are working quite well for people who are not able to participate. Because at least they can be a part of the community and you can have a part of both somehow. That's yeah. what I think it will be in the next two to three, five years going on. COVID is not going to go anywhere soon, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I think we, I mean, we already started uh, drawing out the, the the ideas for a future combination of both in in local and global. Um, actual hybrid events have, have their pros and cons too, but a hybrid community, like they said, uh, with, with uh, physical meetups and then building, building relationships and, and being much better in, in collaborating online is a good thing. Obviously, physical meetups have a geographical aspect so getting that all together, empowering the local communities, connecting the lo local communities among each other and to a global community, that is a, a big puzzle and, and a, quite a challenge. But if we do it right, I think there's a ton of potential for us. Absolutely, 100%. Um, there's another question that came in from Jesse. I'm just going to share it here. Um, I got another more fun type of question for Eki. Where did you get such a cool Martinot suit used in the opening slides? <laughs> yeah, that one was very nice. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh man, um, I have to say it was all inspired by Nico, who's not joining in here, but but Nico was the one who came up with the Mortinod uh, theme and idea, and uh, it, it all got rolling, and I love the Mortinod, so that's, that's for one thing. And then it took me a, a long time. I started, how would I kick this thing off with, with a little bit of fun, and uh, somehow this came to my mind with my little daughter, um, because she likes... Uh, that kind of things and I thought hmm astronaut suit very <laughs> tough but maybe I can get one so I went to eBay and other places and in the end it was a stupid old M no it was not even Amazon it was uh, like a co costume shop where like uh, 20 bucks for that thing plus this this uh, textile helmet <laughs> which was a little bit ridiculous and, and stupid warm but uh, I'd, I'd, I was happy it went well it looks very fancy, honestly. Yeah, I have to put it on time and again. <laughs> I'm slightly jealous that I don't have one to wear. <laughs> I hope you all noticed. You should add it to the track shop. I should sell it online. Yeah, I can sign it. <laughs> Maybe we can put it up in a merch store, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Used one. <laughs> <laughs> No, no. All right, on to the next question. Uh, Mark is asking, may I ask how this idea of the community council was created? Now, I'm not sure who's the, the best person to ask for this, but I think either Eki or Ruth. Yeah, I could take that one. Um, so, yeah, one of my first tasks, if you like, when I started my job was, okay, we need a governance model of some kind in the community both to demonstrate how the community can step up and take ownership and, and have direction and clear ways of running the open source project, but also to make it clear how Acquia is involved in the project and how Acquia supports the project. And so part of that, we formed a little team. There was myself, Dries, and Byron, who's done a lot of work in the Drupal community over the years, um, and Alan as well, my partners, and we worked on looking at all the different governance models that are out there in open source communities. So we looked at things like Ubuntu, Drupal, Joomla, uh, WordPress, various other uh, models. And the idea of the council was quite a nice one because the way, the way it's going to work in the longer term is that those four community members are actually elected. But for ease of getting it set up, we just said we'll have the team leads made it easier for us getting started and having four members of Acquia on that council as well so that there's both parts of what it, the open source project are represented and we find it really helpful as a way of like bringing together expertise and knowledge but also as a place to sort of escalate the important decisions that affect the whole community so things like setting up our financial uh, open collective for example or if there's a particular decision we're making about something in the community that has the potential to impact everyone who uses Mordic, then the community council is the structure that's there to kind of discuss those issues and come to some decision together, working together. I don't so know I if you want to add anything, Trees. I can add a little bit, yeah. So, I mean, one of the things that I have learned from the Drupal project is that having a clear governance structure really allows a community to collaborate better and go faster, you know, go faster together. And when Acquia got involved and we looked at Modic, um, it was clear that it was lacking sort of well-defined roles and responsibilities among the, the project. And that is not a criticism, by the way, I think it's very normal because Modic was a fairly young open source project. And so it, had, it hasn't established all of these things. And I think with the acquisition by Acquia, it raised a lot of questions, both in the community, but also within Acquia in terms of like, how do we as Acquia get involved? <laughs> how do we help? What is our role, right? And so I think the acquisition of Acquia brought sort of the lack of roles and responsibilities to the fore foreground, if you will. It made it more outspoken. And so one of the first things that I worked on with DB and then later Ruth is like, all right, how do we create some clarity? How can we 
define how we all work together and how can we set up a structure so that we can go faster together. And we wanted to be very open and transparent about how that was created. Like we wanted it to be something that, you know, obviously service community led, if you will, but we, we really wanted to have that clarity so we could all kind of answer some of these questions, questions within Aquia, but also questions within the community with a little bit more clarity. And so that's really why, um, you know, we worked on that together and why we kicked off sort of the, the governance work, if you will. Yeah. May I comment a little bit on this as well? Because um, you can tell that, that, that both the Joomla and the Drupal people bring a lot of experience to the table and think in making this new community sustainable um, and to do things right. And other people just say, okay, we need to concentrate on, on, on work getting done and uh, we don't need the bureaucracy, et cetera. And I think what, what uh, came out at the end is, is a really, really good solution that I very much appreciate. Things are well thought through, but they are also not getting in our way because um, it is not day-to-day -day work where these structures are involved, or all involved. Of course, teams are part of the structure, but everything else is not in the way. But it's good to have it because we need those definitions and we need the clarity. And then on top of that, we are even uh, jointly able to change things which are not proper solutions. But we do have a setup that works very, very well. And I appreciate the work, work that you guys, and, and sorry, that you folks put into that. Yeah, I want to say the same thing. I think I'm, I'm proud of the result. And um, I think what we ended up creating is something very unique. It, it's not like we took the Drupal governance model or the Joomla governance model. We really took things from different communities and we picked the things that we liked and that we felt were applicable to, to Modic. And so we created our own little governance model for Modic, the way that we all collaboratively felt was best. Which is, which is pretty cool, you know, to be able to bring together a lot of experience from different open source communities. So, so just um, to, to finish this question, I'm actually curious how, uh, for example, Radu, how did how did you experience this whole process of setting up the yeah this this structure basically? Well, <clears throat> to be honest, uh, for me, it's a little bit simpler. Um, coming from the corporate world uh, up until 2017. And there, <clears throat> there is a lot of structure. And although you have the possibility to work in different uh, projects outside of the main job, you still have the structure and everything in place. And I think having it the way that uh, it is now after almost a year of work with uh, great involvement from uh, Ruth, Eki, and uh, Andres especially. I think it's uh, put the community on the right track in the sense that it helps steering the development towards the greater objectives of uh, making the, the modding the great tool that it is. So you have a clear path of how to do things in order to move towards the strategic objectives. And I think that's a good, uh, that's a good thing because being a community and being volunteer, <clears throat> you may be in or you may be out. You may never know. Life changes, you, I don't know, move to Japan and then uh, you don't get so involved. And then someone else can came in and the continuity of the community is there and the growth of the community is, is there. That's, I think, why we need it. That's a good thing that we have it. Makes perfect sense. Uh, Mark is also asking to, to follow up on this. Are like the people who are sitting here, are you the founding members of the council? Were there changes? So uh, just to add a quick note, normally Norman is also here, but he couldn't couldn't make it for this uh, for this panel. Yeah, this is the founding set of people, except for Norman, as you say. So Dennis is the assistant team lead in the product team. Norman would normally be here, but he's not able to attend. Um, yeah, initially, I think, Leon, you stepped in halfway through the process because we had Kevin, who was sort of caretaking yep. for a time, and then Leon, Leon stepped in. 
Um, but other than that, yeah, these are the people who've been with us for the last year. Okay, thank you. Amazing people. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also um, not, not been very, sorry, sorry, James. It, it's ahead. also not a very old and traditional thing here. It only came with this new governance model. And uh, as Ruth already mentioned, also the, the team leads were pretty much pragmatically um, determined in the beginning from the sprints and then from, from the, the initial actions. And we're very much looking forward to getting to the next phase where we actually vote on the team leads within the teams. And uh, it, the fact that we are sitting here does not mean we need to do that forever. We, we're all happy for new people and fresh blood in the teams. And um, some are very, very energetic and want to push uh, ahead in, in, uh, in features or, and, and others are very happy to do administrative work. And we need, we need it all and we need to be more people definitely. 100%, the more people, more people are always welcome. Um, I actually want to, to go to Leon for a second. I'm just curious how this experience has been for you because I think a lot has happened in, in the past few months, um, also in the, in the education team, I, I believe. So could you, could you briefly reflect on, on your experience with, uh, with Community Council? Um, yeah, back in the day, I was uh, asked, I think by Ruth, if I felt all right to step in the shoes of uh, Kevin, mm -hmm. because uh, Kevin just didn't have the time left to, to properly manage team education. And at first, I was a bit overwhelmed, of course. I didn't know exactly what to expect and how much work this will bring. But um, yeah, by the time of meeting the community council and being approached so friendly and everybody was trying to help me out and if I had questions, like the council was there for me, I felt very welcomed and I stepped into the shoes of the leader pretty quickly, I say. Nice, that's, uh, that's good to hear. To, to follow up on this, I'm actually curious. Um, there's a lot of diversity in, in Maltese community. Uh, I want to ask from your perspective, Leon, from the education team, what, what do you see needs to happen in terms of, for example, documentation? Because I can imagine uh, a lot of us that speak English quite well can understand most of the things, but there's also a, a lot of native uh, yeah, Maltic initiatives for example, websites or, or documentation. How has that been going to, to handle this, this multilingual, uh, basically knowledge management? Yeah, yeah it's um, a mess. Like there's so many resources which <laughs> come in different languages. And um, there's this new founded knowledge base, which is currently in English. But if we had resources, we would share them and try to make that uh, multilingual. So the knowledge base to, to wrap around is just a collection of community knowledge, which is like not suitable directly for the normal documentation, but is also worth sharing. And there's super interesting articles. So um, as the knowledge base is now live for, I think, about a month, um, that would be one of the next steps to try to get it um, in a state where we can have articles in multiple languages and different resources um, for different languages. And just to pitch the idea of the local communities once again, or of, of strengthening those, that is absolutely part of this local communities project by the name of, of, of Mordic Heroes, um, to have them um, contribute in a more structured way to uh, the wealth of Mordic tutorials, etc. We love that it, that is in multiple languages and everybody does their share and maybe some of the local things can be translated into English or back, uh, but at least giving a, a common shape and, and uh, keep giving people more orientation is going to be a tremendous gain. Yeah, absolutely. And to dive a bit further into the topic of diversity, the, the team, I think, has been working quite hard to uh, to promote a very diverse community. Uh, for example, you see in our names here below that a lot of us have pronouns. I mean, Dries clearly didn't get the note, but... Um... <laughs> Sorry. But it's he, him. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> But these are actually here for a reason. And I would like to ask Ruth to uh, 
to elaborate a bit on that. What, what have you been doing lately to, to um, promote diversity in a multi community? Yeah, it's always something I've been really passionate about. I think it's one of those things once you realize, once you see things from others' perspectives that maybe you didn't see before, it's an eye opening ex um, experience that you then take it through your life. So I've, I've heard from many of my friends the challenges they face, particularly in tech, but also in everyday life, if they don't match the normal of what people perceive to be the normal. And um, yeah, when we've been creating the Mortic community, I've been really keen that we try to make sure that we're really aware of diversity and equity and inclusion from the go, from the get go. So encouraging people just to share their pronouns makes it safe for people who maybe their pronouns don't match how they present um, to say, actually, I would rather if you address me like this. And if it just becomes a norm for those of us who uh, it's no problem for me to add pronouns to my email signature and my chat, it allows and enables others um, for who that is something that's really important to them to feel comfortable doing that as well. Um, and yeah, we're really aware that the leadership team is mostly male, white. Um, unfortunately, when you're starting up initiatives like that, like this, it's a case of like, we need people to do the job. And at that time, that's, those are the people who stepped up. But I am really, really passionate about encouraging a more diverse community and more diverse leadership team. I think we really gain a lot from that. And the people involved in the community also gain a lot from being involved in our community. So it's something I'm really trying to encourage and promote and enable other people to do so. So we have a diversity and inclusion Slack channel. If people want to ha continue that discussion um, and help us find ways to keep it at the front of our minds. Thanks for sharing that. There's a, there's a lot of work to do there, but I think this is also a great opportunity to once again emphasize that the, the team, I think, is really open to, to have a more, uh, more diverse team across all teams, by the way, like you mentioned. Mm. So if people would like to, to join, uh, what, what would they, where would they need to go? What do they need to do? Would that be okay. a question? For, okay, go ahead. I would say the first step is to just hop into the team channels on Slack and just join in with the meetings and see what happens. I don't know if any of the other team leads want to give their thoughts. So if they want to go to Slack, how do they do that? We go to uh, mortic.org slash Slack and join. Yeah, that you can fill in your email address. But also there's the opportunity to just reach out to any of us personally as well. Um, so we're all very approachable. And if you would like some help getting started, then that's a great way to do that. There's also a contribution room in the event. So you could go and have a chat there. We might even be able to send an email to all the participants of uh, today's event with more information about contributing to, to Maltic. Yeah, so absolutely. they have sort of a, a go-to guide where, where to get started. All right, that sounds good. So in terms of, I mean, there, there aren't any, uh, any other questions that came in. So still, if someone has some, uh, Please, please drop them at the, the link below. Um, for now, I want to, to ask another, another question in terms of the product itself. What do uh, you here in the team envision for, for Maltic as a product? What, what, where do you think it should go in the future? I mean, there, there's gonna be a session on this uh, by Ruth in a second, uh, but is there anyone who wants to elaborate on their, their personal vision and thoughts on this? Well, how many hours do we have there for that? <laughs> Two think, minutes, go ahead. I, I think it, it really can't be answered. Really There's there such a ton of potential short-term things, long-term things, uh, how the product can develop, the use of the product can, can be on the lower end, on the very high end. Uh, I, I personally think we should concentrate on um, delivering at this point and, and building structures that enable us to deliver with no lack of ideas. Uh, I envision 
a, if, if we are able to do that, I, I see a brilliant future for the product and for the pro project. Um, we're still working really hard to, to, to build the structures to allow that, but, but the, the circumstances couldn't be better with being a, the only relevant open source product with, with GDPR and then data privacy, et cetera, all playing into, into our hands. Um, and with open source as a winning concept. So just go do it and the sky's the limit. Absolutely. So uh, clearly there, there's a lot to do still. There's a lot of ideas, um, but it's all, always difficult to, to find enough people to actually make things happen and get pushed things through. What are the teams that are currently, that currently need uh, most new, new volunteers to step up and to join them? Marketing is one of them. <laughs> <What are they? clears throat> we need volunteers there, definitely. I mean, we are overwhelmed with tasks and everything else, so we're always behind in catching up with stuff. Well, if someone would like to get involved, we'll be gladly to uh, welcome them in our uh, in our team. And I, I think it's also good to emphasize that we need, I, I'll, I'll get to you, Leon, in a second. I think it's important to emphasize that we really need people from a lot of different backgrounds. So whether you are a programmer or a marketeer or a tech or a writer, there's just a lot of profiles we're looking for. So there's pretty much something to do for, for everyone. And I think Leon wants to, uh, to add on to that as well. Yeah, talk, talking about technical writers. Um, as I am more or less responsible for the documentation and the knowledge base, we're in desperate need of people who just like to write. Like if you have a hand for writing documentation, you don't even need to be a technical writer at this point. Like if you just have a feeling that you like to write, um, you're welcome with open arms and we will take care of you. And we just need people to, to write. Like I know it's not everybody's favorite topic to write long hours of documentation, but someone has to do it and we just need people to contribute. And it's something that's very important for the product. <laughs> Who wanted to say something? Radu, was it you? I said I'm fully agreed uh, that we need uh, every help that we can get at this point in, in time. And uh, as Eki said, uh, if we have more people in the team, that means that we also have the leadership for the future if one of us is getting out of the team. And that's really important for, for the project. We're not here to sit on a, on a chair like, I don't know, a politician like Trump, if you want. Uh, we are here to make sure that the project is going towards where we envisioned it like a year ago. And I'll let Bruce to talk about that uh, later. I'm not going to uh, share my vision or stuff. That's her surprise. All right. I would uh, like to ask one last question uh, so that we have a bit of time for a break as well. Um, the question is, can you talk about advisor resources for a person trying to start a company that implements Motic on small to medium businesses in the United States? That's quite a specific question, but nevertheless an interesting, an interesting one. Is there anyone who wants to, to answer it? I can give an advice from the European market. <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I'm not familiar with the US market, but um, if the European market uh, has some resemblance of the Central and Eastern Europe, you need a company that does managed services for Motic, like, uh, I don't know, but mechanic or uh, Eki or someone has someone who has experience. It's, I don't think technical it's for anyone to handle a large number of accounts, especially for small customers. If you want to make money out of it, you have the product just running. And um, sometimes support for uh, software, it's not in everybody's hands. Even if you are a very good programmer or developer, at some point in time, you got stuck. And put your focus towards the business and towards the customers and leave the support to people who are already doing that. It's a bunch of companies that are doing that. Uh, you can find them, I think, on Motic website or you just Google it and then find the supplier. That, that would be my, my advice. 
don't know, I if think, someone else has something. Sorry. I think one, one very basic advice would be to make up your mind whether you want to be a marketing person or a martech person. I'm not sure when I read the question whether he or she is looking to support people technically or marketing wise. Um, if you want to be a tech, a tech guy, then my best advice would be absolutely become a, an active member of the community, dive fully into Mordic and be part of it and, and get going. And, and I think in the US, like everywhere else in the world, the, 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 uh, the, 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 playing field, the playing field is very open to new uh, players there and, and there's a lot of market out there for everyone. So by all means, go ahead and do that and, and join the community. If you are looking to be an agency or a marketer who is using a Mordic as they would use a commercial SaaS service, for instance, then I would agree, agree with Radu, don't, don't waste your time uh, in, in trying to get the tech to work, uh, but, but rely on somebody who does the job for you. I think that's uh, that's a great advice to uh, to answer this question with. Thank you for for answering all those questions. I'd like to wrap things up here, so we have a bit of a break for the next session. Um, again, thank you so much for answering all the questions and for giving the community an opportunity to meet you as well. I think it's nice for people to see the faces be behind Maltic and, and the community and what's happening. Um, I think there's one clear message that came out of this of this talk as well is that. A lot is happening in the community. There's a lot of ideas, um, but there's a clear, clear need for more volunteers and more people to step up. Um, so we'll be sure to be sharing uh, like details with you on how to get started to contribute to Mautic. We've seen some great sessions today from both technical and non-technical people about how they are contributing to Mautic or similar, uh, similar solutions. So once again, thank you everyone. Thanks for being here. And um, in around 10 minutes, we'll have a very exciting keynote from Ruth coming up. So please make sure to be there. It's going to be in track one. So grab a coffee, sit back, and relax and enjoy it, say. Thank you. Thank you.